I am aware that graduation isn't really happening for people in 2020 and I just feel so sorry for those people. My heart goes out to you that if you've been studying for three years to work towards this moment and you can't even graduate and, and have that special day. I know of a couple of people that aren't being able to graduate this year and it's just horrible. They're not going to be able to get the photos that they thought they were going to get and nothing's going to be the same. So I just want to take this moment to say that I know, even though I do this video, graduation is going to be very different this year. And for a lot of people, it's going to be a mini photo shoot in their back garden with a nice dress and probably photoshopping themselves onto the uni background because they're not going to get the graduation that they wanted. But this is just a video for future references and just from my experience as well, telling you about what happened at my graduation and for future references when, when graduations go back to normal or if people do get their ceremonies later on in the year just some advice that you can reflect on and come back to this video at any time but my heart does go out to those people that graduation isn't going to be the same and you're not going to have the same experience i do feel really sorry for you and i hope that you get the, the ceremony and the celebration that you deserve once this is all over hi everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you for joining me today and i hope you're all well today i'm going to be talking all about graduation what to expect and what you can do before you graduate what to expect before the actual ceremony during the ceremony afterwards and some gift ideas at the end as well so if you're interested in those kind of things please keep watching so to start off with i'm going to talk about some tips and some preparation you can do before graduation and this is before like a month to two months before you graduate. So your uni should send you an email and your third year all about graduation, telling you about things that you can do to prepare. You'll have to actually register to graduate. If you don't register, you can't graduate. Things like that include ordering your cap and gown. And when you do that, you have to input your, um, you have to go to this specific website where they tell you to put in your height so that you know how long the gown's going to be. You have to actually measure your head circumference so you can get a cap that fits your head. Um, I'm trying to think of what specifics they also do. You have to put in, um, oh yeah, that's another thing. So not everybody has the same colour sash on their graduations. So different schools will have different things. And what I mean by that is I was a part of the law school. So ours was quite gross. It was like a gold and a green from what I can remember. I'll insert a picture here of my me and my graduation. So I think it was like a gold and green sash. And then the business school had a different colour and I think the sciences had different colours on their sash. So you have to input your height, your head circumference for the cap, and also your school's colour so you know what you're going to be getting. And then along on those lines as well, you also have to pay for your cap and gown. And that's something that I didn't actually know you had to do. I thought, you've already taken enough money off this since graduating and since studying. Surely I'd have to pay for my own cap and gown to graduate. Yeah, you do. So the cap and the gown was a £50 higher. That doesn't mean you get the money back. You don't. You have to pay for that yourselves. And then you, I also paid for a scroll, which I've got here, and that's five pounds. And this keeps my degree in here. And I think it's just a nice thing to have. And also, when you're having your photos taken, a lot of people have their traditional cap and gown and scroll. So I paid five pounds for this just to keep my degree nice. And it's just a nice thing to look back on. And it's just really sweet. So I paid for that although I didn't pay for a photographer because I just thought we've got loads of cameras at home my mum has her own camera for work so we can just take some like nicer photos and I went pay for a photographer and a little photo shoot in hindsight I sort of wish that I had just so I had the proper official uni photos where you're sitting there you've got the cap gown scroll and potentially got your parents behind you um, I, I can't remember how much that price was again I'll put it on the screen here if I can find it but I want to say it it was expensive. If it was like 20 quid, I would have paid for it. But I've got a feeling it was between 50 to 70 pounds to have this fo like photographer have your proper uni photo shoot. So I didn't pay for that. But that is something that you can pay for. Again, you can either try and pay for that for yourself or maybe your parents will pay for that. But I just thought 55 pounds for the cap gown and scroll is already quite a lot considering we've been studying for three years, already in a lot of debt as it is, and now you want me to pay for my own cap gown scroll. So 
that is some preparation that you can do before graduation months before so register online cap gown and scroll buy your photographers and then also tickets so your unis might be different but for us at nottingham trent we had uh, two free tickets and also then you could buy tickets, extra tickets. So I knew I wanted my mum and my boyfriend there and then I wanted my dad to come as well but he would have to have bought his ticket and for whatever reason I completely missed when the tickets were going online. Really keep an eye out to, for your emails, uni websites, when your tickets will go online so you can purchase them and get extra people to come watch you graduate because I completely missed it and before I realised it was actually the day of getting the tickets, I was on the phone lines ready to order them and by the time that it came to it, they had all gone. And you get different packages. So we had a package so that your extra family can come and watch you, specifically in the graduation hall and watch you graduate. And I don't know how much that was, maybe £15. And then the extra ticket like packages were for your friends and family members to watch you on a live stream so on a in a lecture theatre on the huge screen watching you live graduate and that's where the kind of all the additional people went because our graduation um ceremony hall was really small so there was only a limited amount of people that could go in there and then everybody else had to go in the lecture theatre and watch live and have refreshments so unfortunately i did actually miss the package to, to get my extra family in the hall and everybody else, my dad and my grandma, had to go and watch in the uh, live ceremony hall. So really keep an eye out for tickets, especially if you want more people coming. If you just want the two, that's fine. But keep an eye out for extra tickets if you want more people coming. And they differ on prices. For us, it was about £10 per person, but it could be five between 5 and 20 for other unis. Um, another piece of advice that I would give before like prep before graduation is even if you want if you've got a huge family you want everybody there just really think about your group because it is kind of even though it's a day of celebration it can be stressful because you're going from here there everywhere and if you have too many people you end up losing people and then regrouping and then it just ends up being a lot of hassle and I'm sure you could do like a family event after you've graduated, after the whole ceremony, go back to somebody's house and have a celebration. But in terms of the actual graduation ceremony, try and keep your group small. I had five, including myself. And I think at times that felt like a lot because like somebody would walk off and then we've got to go and see where they are. Somebody else would go to the toilet and you've got to wait around. It's a very busy day. There's a lot of people there. You are not the only group that will be um, having their graduation on that day. A lot of the times, because so many people are graduating, they will do two ceremonies a day. So they'll do a morning and an afternoon one. So there's people coming in and out constantly. And definitely just try and keep your group small if you can. So a lot of people, well, girls and boys, but specifically girls, will want to know what to wear. What's the appropriate thing? Can you wear heels? What kind of thing do you wear for graduation? So what I would say is keep it really comfortable, keep it flattering, something that you know you look nice in, you feel nice in, don't go too expensive. I just re-wore a dress that I wore to my work's Christmas party the year before, which was a black bodycon and it had a cutout here, so it was a little bit booby, but I thought, it's a coming of age dress, you know, I'm an adult, I'm 21, I'm graduating, I'm allowed to show a little bit of cleavage and it was a one shoulder. And again, if I can find pictures of me in it, I will insert them now. But that was the dress that I wore. It was midi length, so it wasn't too mini. And I felt comfortable. I could walk in it. I didn't want anything too tight and restricting that my legs couldn't move because you were going to be going up the stairs, down the stairs, across the stage. You don't want anything too tight and restrictive that you're going to feel uncomfortable in on the day. So choose something that you feel comfortable in that's flattering. If I'm honest, you don't spend too much money because your gown will cover your dress quite a lot. That's why I just went for black. Initially, everyone wants to match their dress to their sash colours. So if it's uh, pink, they want a pink dress. If it's red, red dress, which does look nice. But you can barely see your dress underneath the gown. Mine just drowned me. So the fact that I had a little black dress on underneath, you couldn't really tell. But it's all kind of like the cap and the gown anyway. So it's not too much about the dress when you're taking those pictures. Yeah, you don't have to get a new dress. You don't have to go expensive. You can't even really see the dress that much anyway. So that's in terms of what to wear. And now going on to heels. 
a lot of girls just wore flats or they wore heels and for pictures and stuff but in terms of actually walking across the stage they had flats on because I'm sure everybody's worried about walking across that stage and face planting and everybody laughing which nobody actually fell over I didn't see anybody or hear anybody fall over on the graduation even though you panic about it I mean I can barely walk in heels I'm the clumsiest person I know and even I managed to walk across the stage and I had heels on Bearing in mind, I'm told anyway, I don't wear high, high heels. They were only about four inches. So, yeah, a lot of girls just wore flats or they wore like a kitten heel because that's in, that was in fashion last year. So just be mindful of that. Something you know that you can walk in because you're going to be doing a lot of walking around your city or your town that you went to and then going for meals afterwards. So just wear things that you're comfortable in, but that you also like. So now that I've covered what to wear and heels, if you're thinking about what kind of makeup to do for your graduation, I mean, obviously I've kind of got on like a full glam now, like glitter eye, smoky eye, lipstick, everything. But I mean, you can wear a face like this for graduation. I mean, it is a big ceremony, it's a big day. But for me, I wanted makeup that wasn't so like what's trendy right now. I wanted something that was going to be kind of timeless and a bit classic that I can look back in 10, 20 years to come and think like that makeup still looks good now. So I did just a really subtle eye. I did lashes. I did just a neutral lip. I didn't put that much foundation on because I know people have told me in the past when they graduated that the cap can sit around here and they had like a ring of foundation around their cap if you're watching and you know who you are she told me that she got a big foundation line all around her graduation cap so she kind of like threw it back and just like run off because she didn't want it to pay in case you damaged it because you do have to pay if you damage any of it so yeah just go light on the foundation because if you sweat because we had a really hot day it was a really hot summer last year if you get a really hot day and you put a lot of foundation on and you get a foundation line on the cap, just be wary that you might have to pay for that. So in terms of makeup, just keep it light, keep it kind of natural. But I still wanted lashes, a bit of eyeshadow and lipstick on. So I kind of kept it neutral, but like glam at the same time. Another piece of advice for preparation before graduation is get your bookings in for tables at restaurants weeks before because it is going to get busy everybody's going to have the same idea everyone's going to want to go for drinks and food after so we had our table books at i believe prezzo's and you'll be able to kind of work out when you'll be doing that because you'll have your time of your graduation ceremony they'll tell you when to actually arrive before that how long to expect the ceremony to be and you can kind of work out from them from taking pictures when you can actually sit down and have your food so definitely book a table before you even before a few weeks before your graduation ceremony because places are going to get busy and they are going to get full up so now moving on to before the ceremony the day of your graduation you will have an allotted time you will know that a couple of weeks before your graduation ceremony of when you will actually be going and walking across that stage and actually graduating so for me my time was quarter to 12 11 45 and our email said that you actually had to arrive and register at quarter past 10. so it really does take a long time for you to queue up register at your ceremony get your cap and your gown get your scroll potentially have your photo shoots like your professional ones and take pictures it does take a long time so be allow yourself to have plenty of time from waking up to getting ready having some breakfast and then going allowing yourself to travel to the ceremony i live in kegworth which is very close to nottingham so i could stay at my house a lot of people got a hotel or they stayed in their uni accommodation the night before because they had a really early ceremony really think about the time that you've got to be there how much time you need to get ready travel time and also allow yourself plenty of time to register because even though we tried to aim for quarter past 10 we had to because we didn't want to park in the city center we drove to the park and ride got the tram so we had to like think about that kind of travel getting off the tram walk into the ceremony so and we were a little bit late 
luckily I wasn't actually late to the actual ceremony but I was late to the registration even though I, I thought I had allowed myself plenty of time add more time onto what you think because it could take a long time you talk to your friends you want to get ready and if you're there earlier it just means you've got more time to take pictures really so now I'm going to move on to the actual ceremony itself one thing that kind of surprised me which sounds silly is it is a very formal event it feels like a wedding they played a trumpet as all the graduands was what that's what they call them they, they kind of talk in some sort of shakespearean language um everyone rises as the graduands walk into the room you um we had a little balcony at the top and then we had all of our parents and family members below with the stage so we could see everything that was going on we have our individual groups at the top so we certain groups of maybe 10 people and they're the people that you're going to be walking along the stage with so a little group will be called at a time they walked around came downstairs and then their names called and they would go up on the stage walk across shake the hands and then walk back down and it really is a matter of seconds for the actual graduation ceremony itself however the whole ceremony takes 45 minutes. It is long, make sure you go to the toilet before because it isn't just a quick in and out process. Even though everyone's there just specifically to watch you or walk across the stage, you've got to see everybody else do it as well. So it can last between 45 minutes to an hour, even though you walking across the stage takes five seconds. Make sure to do all those things before you are going to be sitting for a long time. And we were actually, uh, I was the last group to walk across the stage. So we literally had to clap everybody that went on and I was one of the last people to walk across the stage in our allotted time. Also just like a myth buster they don't announce your grade as you walk across the stage unless they do it in different unis. I doubt they do, they didn't do it at Nottingham Trent. I think everyone was worried that they were going to be like Charlotte Morel graduating with a 2-1. They don't, they don't mention your grade. They do have certain little special awards to certain students that have but perhaps got the highest grade in certain modules or the year but they don't actually announce your grade and they certainly wouldn't say if you were to have failed i mean i don't even know if you can go to graduation if you fail but they don't announce your grade as you walk across the stage which a lot of people were worried about another thing for the actual ceremony is it's emotional you've been studying for three four five six seven years some people and you've been waiting for this point and i didn't I didn't think that it was going to be emotional, but it really was. As you were watching your friends graduate and walk across the stage, and then when it came to you, you just I just felt so proud, and having my family there watching me just felt amazing. So it is kind of emotional. It's an end of an era. You're about to go into adulthood, and yeah, it's emotional. It because it is so formal as well. It just feels like this is a real big life event, and. This is serious. This is why you've gone to uni to have this moment. So yeah, it is formal. It is emotional. It's amazing. So you can not only have the live stream that your parents can watch when they've got the other packages. You they also for us live streamed it internationally. So say we had a lot of students that were studying abroad in England. So their family back home in other countries could watch the graduation ceremony as well. But I had friends watch me graduate. I, I watched my friends graduate because they graduated on different days. So it was amazing. You could watch live. Remember, I think I was in the car somewhere and I was watching on a live stream my two best friends graduate and you feel happy for them. It's kind of like you're there on their day as well. They do have live ceremonies that are streamed internationally for other people to watch and you can watch your friends graduate as well which you kind of feel a part of the day which was really cool now moving on to after the ceremony after the ceremony you they open the two double doors we walk down from the hall straight into the um like main uni building which was just across the road so we just had to walk across the road go up the steps and then we were welcomed we were clapped back into the building and then there was fruit snacks and prosecco on arrival from there you could have a bit of a drink and just kind of relax you've done it it's over you didn't fall over you've got your degree and you can just chill a bit then you've done it you've graduated have a, some prosecco and a bit of a snack and chill out that's what's happened straight after you graduate 
and also we had a photographer taking pictures of us when we walked across the stage shaking hands with the vice chancellor and those pictures are then for sale so you then go across and see all these pictures that have been developed and you can then buy a picture if you want so even if you don't get the chance to have your professional photo taken or you pay for a professional photographer um, you still got an option to buy those photos which are kind of more uni professional uni photos so my mum and my grandma bought a photo of that and I don't know whether it was like between 10 and 20 pounds for those photos but you do get an option to buy those if you didn't get if you didn't have a professional photographer which I didn't you can buy those pictures it's also a chance just to go and socialize with your friends with your with the people that you've been studying for the past three years and get pictures with those people and just chill it's the time for you to take your silly photos where you throw your cap in the air and even though you, you have to be really careful, supposedly it's a safety hazard. I mean, everybody wants a picture where they throw their cap in the air. It's just a typical graduation photo. That was the time then for us to get those kind of photos. We before didn't want to take our caps off because for some people they're too big and they have like bobby pins the cap to their head you don't want to be taking that cap off before the graduation ceremony i just left mine on as soon as the person put my cap on that's it i left it i thought i'll take more of the silly kind of like typical graduation photos when i finish so that's what i did once we finish you can kind of you still have time with the cap and the gown you can give it back at any time and then that's the time for us to take the silly photos and i took my cap off thrown it i put the cap on my mom put the cap on my dad put the cap on my boyfriend and I took so many cool photos and um, I might insert a few here I got inspiration from a couple of the people that I seen graduate earlier than me um one girl had a picture with her boyfriend who uh picked her up and she had the gown on put the cap on him which I thought was really sweet so I copied that idea and um yeah just got inspiration from other people's graduation photos because you only do that day once unless you do a master's or do another degree so you kind of want to get all the photos that you can just to remember that special day so that's what you can kind of do after the ceremony so now moving on to some gifts that you can get for people well, I know people are going to be watching that want to buy things for their friends or family even if they're not graduating this year or not officially graduating because of the virus you can still get a couple of graduation gifts and some sentimental things that can mark the occasion one of the first things that i got as a gift which i think is just so special is from my grandma and it's a engraved mirror this is the little compact mirror that's what it looks like and then it says brains as well as beauty it says my name the day i graduated which was the 15th of june and this is from a very proud grandma. So this is something you can keep always. I just throw it in my handbags. It's just handy to have a little compact mirror, but the fact that it's engraved and that has the little cap there, it's just really special. and something you can keep forever. So that's one gift idea. Another one is the classic, like if you have a Pandora bracelet to get a Pandora charm. So I have one which is a cap, which says, hard work pays off and then i have another one which is a stack of books that has the little cap on top with the dangle tassel and a scroll on it and it says 2019 the year that i graduated so i'm sure pandora will do updated ones from when you graduate or things to mark your graduation this year and then a another special present that i got i mean they're all special but i mean in terms of different presents is i got this little memory box i mean the cap i can't be bothered to put that on properly but can you imagine that it slides down and this is a little memory box which doesn't actually have a picture in right now but i do attend intend to do that so then this is what it looks like you can keep it on the side and then i just have things from my day in there so i have the tram stop ticket my student oh shit i have my student card really cute from the first day i have my graduation ceremony ticket And what else one more thing the guest tickets as well so 
that's what I have in there. And like I said, I do intend to get a photo to actually put in the top. There we go, with it pushed down. And, and it's just something you can keep forever. My dad got me this and it was just a really sweet gift idea and something that is a bit different. I've never seen this before. I don't know where he got where he got it from. It was a present, but that is just a different kind of idea for what to get somebody. Um, of course, I got the obvious, like I got a bit of money, cards. Um, I think my grandma also bought me a gin, like a bottle of gin and those kind of things and flowers. But if you're thinking of some kind of special gifts that people can keep forever i think the the mirror the pandora charms and the little memory box are perfect ideas one more thing that i wanted to mention is i have wrote a blog post all about what to expect when you graduate and i wrote that days after i graduated so if you want a fresh account of what to expect when you graduate please check that out i'll link it in the description box below so that's it for this video i really hope you've all enjoyed it and all that's left to say is congratulations to anybody that is graduating or has finished uni. I hope you get the celebration that you deserve and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.